This video is on the snap modes or functions here. We have in the toolbar up here, if you don't have it, I'm right clicking. You can see snap quantize, that's what you want to have in there. Basically, this is the on off button, if you will. Now you get a lot of information that goes on here. You have different types, how you want to snap. Once you have something set up, you've got some sub information here, bars, beats, and if you use quantize, this menu comes into effect. It also changes its look. I'm right clicking on the bar ruler. You can see now I'm in milliseconds because I'm in time. If I go to time code, I'm going to get my frames and subdivisions. So depending on what view you've got in your ruler, will affect this menu item here. Let's go ahead and play around with this a little bit. So we have it basically off on switch. So now that we've got it on, and we're going to keep it on grid right now, and you can see we've got it snapped to the bar. So let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit so you can see what's going on here better. And so I can try to move it. Yeah, it's just snapping. I can't get anything in between there. That's it. And it's doing exactly as advertised. Let's go to the beat. And you can see each one of my division lines there. It's snapping right there. Works perfectly. Let's say we want to use quantize. So we got eighth notes. Now we may not see the eighth note divisions. And if we don't, I'll zoom in a little more. And we don't. So let me go ahead, zoom in a bit more. If I can get a hold and keep that zoom tool there. And now you can see the eighth note subdivisions as well. And that's going to snap to eighth notes. We can go back to beat and you can see my divisions changed here. The grid changed. All right. Go back to bar if we want. Probably won't change the division, but we'll, we'll snap only to bars. Okay, so let's go back to beat. Actually, I'm going to turn this off for a second. I'm going to move, offset this a little bit. And you can see it reads 21, 1, 2, 30. And this is telling me it's bar 21, beat 1, second 16th, 30th tick or subdivision. So if I go up here now and say grid relative, it's going to respect snapping to beat, but it's going to respect this offset. Everything is going to read 2. Dot 30 at the end of it. I won't be able to do anything else. Notice this gap. It's all saying 230 up here. It doesn't matter where I put it. So that's what the relative means. It says I'm respecting how far off you are actually the grid and I'm moving you an absolute division here. Let's take a look at events. And let me go ahead and zoom out here so we can better see that. All right. So what this says is this says I'm going to snap something either to the leading edge or trailing edge of the event. And that's what's happening here. I'm kind of cruising along and snap. It's perfectly aligned up. Snap. It's perfectly aligned up. So that works nicely. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. That's shuffle. Shuffle. There's a couple of ways to use this. I'll show you one way the manual and other people describe it. I rarely have ever used this. I can change the order of my regions. I've got these colored so it'll show up here. I can click drag over here and notice we go, you know, let me do an undo and you can see what do we do? Orange, green, blue. Now moving over here, uh, let's get it over there. We can move the green in. So you can play around with this order of events. I don't ever do that. A lot of people do. What I like to do with shuffle, a couple of things. I like to snap something. I know that if I move this right now, it's going to snap up perfectly to the edge of this. Thus, and that can be really handy, snapping a bunch of regions together, making sure they're spot on. Secondarily, I use this for a little audio editing. Let me grab a region here and take it out over here. Actually, let me take this off so I can move it out a little further. And this is really handy for editing. You can make any kind of a cut. Let me grab the range tool. Let me zoom in a little better actually to this. See if this is going to let me do this. And I think I need my selection tool. There we go. And let me go back into the range tool. And I'm going to take out this portion right here. So I'm going to make my selection. I'm going to hit delete. And you're going to see this snap to, from uh, this point to this point. So it's a, in, in, in video editing, they call it a ripple cut, basically. This can be really handy. Get out breath marks, remove phrases. When you're working with VO, especially this technique, using that shuffle can be most excellent. All right, let me go ahead and get out of my zoom and see what we've got next here. So we've got the magnetic, the almighty magnetic cursor. What does that mean? Well, that means that you have got, let me, sorry, let me get back into watch my zooms here. Got that. All right, I'm going to move my cursor over here. And I can snap as I'm cruising along, an event wants to snap to the cursor point. It can be the trailing edge of the event or the leading edge of the event. And that's the power of the magnetic cursor. Now, you've got some other things here, but they're just combinations of what we've reviewed. So you can have multiple rather than just having one item in effect. You can have grid plus cursor, events plus cursor, and a combination of grids and events plus cursor. So however you like to work, I want to talk about one other thing, and this is a little bit advanced, but kind of neat. So let me go down. 
And I'm going to select this audio region down here, and I want to show you its start time. Now, its start time is not on a beat. And I will say that, that uh, going back up here into our grid relative can kind of take care of this problem. But this is a good way to work on this. I like working on this. So I'm going to snap this to grid right now. My point being, well, let's listen so we can get my point. First of all, let's listen to the region. You're going to hear a little tremolo, some guitar, and it has an anticipation before the downbeat, which we'll hear when we hear the music. Let's just listen to the region by itself. So you can see that tremolo is kind of an anticipation or pickup. Let's get the band in there. So again, the tremolo is an anticipation and that can be good or bad. But if right now, if I have this on beat and I move this out here somewhere, it's going to snap to a beat. It has nothing to do if I want to cut and paste this further in time. I'm going to be out of time. So I'm going to undo that. Now, again, grid relative. we we'll go up here, right? Could take care of that. It'll maintain that offset all the time. But another way to do this is I know the downbeat is bar 11. I'm going to go ahead and go down here, double click, type in 11. And I'm going to go up to audio. And I'm going to go into snap point to cursor. And basically all events have a snap point. By default, they're created at the leading edge. And we have just moved this one to the cursor location. And you can also view this if you're in the sample editor. And here, by the way, if I do an undo, let's see if it'll move it back. Yes, it does. Okay, so here's the original snap point, And I'm going to do a redo and show you where I've snapped it to. So this is truly the downbeat. This is bar 11. So let me hit return and get out of this. So now, whenever I choose to move this around, it doesn't matter where I go, the snap point is lining up to the bar lines to my grid rather than the leading edge of the region. And this can be very handy, absolutely very handy. Okay, that covers all the tips and tricks I can show you on Snap. So hope you got something you can take with you on this. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.